Hi Geography students, this is Ms. Wildy. This video lecture is going to be some basic understanding of maps, types of maps, tools that geographers use, um, vocabulary, quite honestly, quite a bit of vocabulary, and I think that the textbook does a pretty good job understanding these things, but this one's, I just want to kind of elaborate on some things that the textbook may not. So the first thing we're going to talk about is just cartography, and that's the study of map making. Um, so whenever you make your own map or um, uh, if someone makes a map and you're understanding it, that's part of cartography. Um, the, there are several problems because a map is typically flat, whereas the earth is round. So trying to um, put a round object on a flat surface is very complicated and something has to change or be distorted in order to do it. So um, we also have to of course change the scale because if we had everything the, the, in reality the same size on a map then it wouldn't we wouldn't be able to function because their map would be very very large so we have to change the scale to represent what it is in reality and that's what our map scale is so um, you can do it as a ratio or fraction you can do it as a graphic scale kind of like you know one inch equals 100 kilometers or you can just write it out as written scale and one thing that is sometimes confusing to geography students is the idea of whether something is small scale or large scale so um, a small scale means that it's actually a very large area because the, the amount of distance on the actual map would be very, very small. So one inch equals 1,500 miles, um, whereas if you have a large scale map, one inch is only 21 miles. So it's, it's a larger scale, but it's a smaller area or more, there's more detail to that area, if that makes sense. So you'll notice on this, I think this does a really good job, the map of the United States would be a small scale, whereas the map of Atlanta would be a larger scale. Um, so kind of think the opposite, I guess, to help you understand that. So projection. This is sort of that idea that, that we must um, distort something in order to um, truly see everything on the round surface. So it's, it's trying to transfer, again, the Earth's surface to a flat, flat map. And so we have to distort something, either distance or shape or size or, or direction. Um, and everyone's had their different take on this. So we're going to take, um, we're going to look at just some of these projections, the one of the one, some of the ones that are more commonly found on the AP exam. The first one, and probably the most popular one, is Mercator. So Mercator distorts both size and shape. You'll notice that there is, it's rectangular in size, and you have a lot, much larger sense of the water surrounding the um, continents. Um, the idea of this is that it used to be used for nautical purposes, so for, for um, maritime shipping, those kind of things, and so they needed to have an idea of where the waters went um, and more emphasis on the water. So that's the Mercator projection. Then you have Mulweed. This is um, the oval shape. It distorts both the shape and the angle though. Um, still water is a huge part of it, but it um, is trying to, again, give that emphasis so that this is a round object. Robinson is, is um, fairly common as well. It distorts everything in small amounts, um, and it's fairly, it's, it's kind of pretty. It's kind of what people associate as the, as the one they, they go to. It, it seems aesthetically pleasing. Um, and so, again, it's going to have the flat top and bottom, but the rounded sides. That sort of singulars, sing, singles it out for Robinson. And everything is distorted just a little bit. Azimuthal, equi equidistant, is going to be um, more of the polar look of them at the map. So it distorts shape and distance as you get further from the center. Um, fuller. Fuller projection is the weird one. It is just... It changes where things are, basically, um, distorts the direction of things, but it keeps the shape and size consistent, which is 
kind of makes sense, but at the same time, people look at it and they're like, that's completely wrong. It's just, you know, we, I don't want to look at that. But um, it is it is nice. It shows you the accurate accurate shape and size of things. It's just that it distorts the direction of things. Peter stretches everything. So it um, oftentimes is emphasizing more of the political um, or uh, yeah, political boundaries of, of the continents rather than the physical features. So again, the size is more accurate, but the shape is distorted or stretched. Um, so here's a little quiz. Which of um, A, B, C, D, which of the projections we just talked about is each of these? So take a, just a couple seconds um, to think about that. Again, remember the kind of clues I gave you in terms of it's rectangular in shape or if it has the flat top and bottom and rounded sides or whether it's all rounded or the polar. So real quickly to go through this, A is moleweed, B is mercator, C is azimuthal equidistant, and D is Robinson. So those are some of the main ones. Other types of maps we need to make sure we understand the difference between. A reference map is something you refer to, obviously. So it's one you would use to, to find certain places. Like if you look at a map of the United States to find where Texas is, that's a reference map. If you look at a street map, you're referring to it in order to find out where something is or how to get someplace. Um, in terms of... Um, concepts related to a reference map, you oftentimes are using it in order to think about something called relative location. So where is Georgia in relation to Texas? Or where is the state capital in relation to my house? So that's all relative location. Um, it, it's how something is in relation to another feature on the map. Whereas you might um, uh, have absolute location and that's where you have your latitude and longitude. Um, real quickly with this one, the you would give a relative location of where Caddo Parish is related to the other parish or counties, parish is a county, um, related to it. So if you can find um, Caddo Parish, um, then you can say it is um, west of Bossier or north of DeSoto. Those are relative locations. And then, of course, absolute location is where you have your latitude and longitude, specific coordinates on the map. Longitude, remi remember, is um, also called a meridian, and it is um, goes north and south. So it's measuring how far you are east or west of the prime meridian. But it is it is running north and south, whereas um, latitude um, latitude is going to be running east to west. Again, latitude lines are also called parallels. Um, and they are running east to west, but they are measuring how far north or south you are from the equator. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Please remember, you got to make sure you understand which direction is latitude and which direction is longitude. So a thematic map, we're back to a different types of maps. Thematic maps are things we use in, in um, human geography quite a bit. They are specifically showing one, one specific theme or idea on the map. So if we look at a map of unemployment for the United States, that is thematic map. All right, it's showing you one particular theme that you can use to compare unemployment between states or countries perhaps or whatever. Chloropleth maps use color, chloro, color, and they, um, so you can usually have a darker color represent a higher percentage. It doesn't have to be that way, so please, please, please make sure you look at legends or keys to be able to understand it. But the idea is that you're using a shading or a coloring to replace symbols or ratios. Dot maps, again, are the same idea. You're using dots instead of um, different colors to represent where you have high densities of things. Usually dot maps are used for population um, density maps. Isoline maps are um, showing you where you have consistent um, values of something and then where that value would change. Kind of like a, um, a topographic map where you're showing elevation and the changes in elevation, that's a type of isoline map. Mental maps are ones where 
you are using your brain. You have either from studying on your own or from just driving around and looking at things outside, you are making maps in your mind. And that's why when someone says, where's your house, you're using a mental map in order to, to kind of how to tell somebody to get to your house. And this can be um, done through, again, study yourself, but also just basic everyday living. You make mental maps. Cardiograms are kind of are kind of cool. They um, give a shape or um, a certain size to an area based on a value of the data. So you would have again areas that are um, higher in value would have a larger space on the um, cardiogram, whereas ones that don't have very much would be less. Um, so this map, of course, is about world population, and you can certainly tell that, that even though India is not that large on a regular map, because of its population, it looks like that. China, of course, as well, whereas countries that have very, very small population are, are going to be almost microscopic on the, on the map. GIS is very important. It stands for Geographic Information System, and it is a software computer system that has layered thematic maps so that you can take different thematic maps and overlay them on top of each other to be able to see how ev everything represents, to, how it is represented together, how it impacts each other. Um, this is oftentimes used when you're trying to decide where to place something, like where to put a new mall or a new school, where to build it. They would use GIS to do this, where they layer things like, you know, a road map. They would layer where the population lives. They would, you know, maybe um, if they need to have transportation to major, from major cities, they need to look at highways. So they would inter, interlay those maps on top of each other and be able to see the best possible place to put something. The other one that is an acronym that gets mixed, messed up or messed up sometimes they're um, confused with GIS is GPS, but most of you know what this is. So this is geographic, I'm sorry, global positioning system. This is what you've got in your cars or perhaps on your um, on your watches where you can tell exactly where you are in relation to other things and you can even use it to tell you how to get places. So again, this is using satellites in space to um, track where you are and where other things are, and then it's used oftentimes to get you places. Remote sensing is another tool that geographers use, and this is where you um, look at satellite images or aerial photographs to see it's usually used for what damage you might have um, from a natural disaster. If you can't be in that location because it's unsafe, then you would use aerial photographs or satellite images to tell what's happened there. So that's remote sensing. So these are some basic tools that geographers use. Um, Obviously, we'll talk more about these as we go. We'll use a lot of these tools in class, but I wanted to give you an, an, a quick overview of some of these, maybe a little better than what the book was explaining. So I hope this has been helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.